Welcome back to Mr. Latham's Economics. Today we're going to talk about the supply and demand curves. First thing we're going to talk about is the law of demand. Well, the law of demand says as the price of a good increases, the quantity people are willing to purchase is going to decline. What's that mean? Well, let's assume we have some tasty hamburgers. Okay, and you want to sell these tasty hamburgers, and you're going to sell them for $3. We look over here, and we're going to sell this many hamburgers. Okay? You raise your price to $5, well, that, that's more expensive. People are going to be willing to purchase less, and your quantity demanded decreases. As the price increases, the quantity demanded, and we're going to put quantity demanded right there, decreases. And once again, the price increases to $7. Once again, the quantity demanded okay, decreases again. So the law of demand says as the price of a good increases, the quantity demanded decreases makes perfect sense. Okay. Now, there's three reasons demand, the demand curve slopes downward. Okay, and you need to know these three. The first one's called diminishing marginal utility. And basically, it means you get tired of the same old thing, even if it's really good. Let's think about Reese's Cups. I love Reese's Cups. You offer me a Reese's Cup right now, I'd say, yes, I'll take it. I'll eat it. You offer me a second one. Yeah, yeah, I like them. I'll eat a second one. You offer me a third one. Um, you know, I'll probably eat it. You offer me a fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. Eventually, I would get to where I was like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm good. Even, even if it were free, I would say no. And so I'm going to pay. If you want me to eat more, you're going to have to charge me less. Second one's the income effect. The item starts using up too much of your income. Okay, that's supposed to be too, too much of your income. And in this case, let's think about you and the price of gas. Now, for me, gas doesn't matter too much. I make enough money. I don't really care so much. But for you, it works out really well. If the price of gas today, let's say it's $3.50, if it goes to $6, you're going to buy less gas. In other words, the more something costs, the more of your income it eats up, the less you're going to buy of it. If you think about a billionaire, no matter how much a ga gas a billionaire bought, it really doesn't need hardly any of his income, so it might not make much of an effect. But for most things, for most people, if something eats up more of your income, you're going to purchase less of it. The last thing is the substitution effect. The substitution effect says as something gets more expensive, you're going to work harder to find something that will work out and substitute for that item. Well, Back in the day, we used to eat steak a lot, and hamburgers not so much. And the big reason for that is steak wasn't all that expensive. Well, what's happened is the price of steak's gone up and up and up and up. And what we still want red meat sometimes, and so what we do now is we hardly ever order steak, but we get hamburger more often. In other words, we found a cheaper substitute, which of course means as the price of steak goes up, people are going to be more likely to, instead of ordering that steak, just order a hamburger. Okay, so why does demand slope downward? Well, there's three primary reasons. Diminishing marginal utility, the income effect, and the substitution effect. Okay, what's this look like? Well, here's, uh, now let's look at the law of supply. Okay, law of supply. In this case, Let's say I can sell something for $7. Well, hey, I'm going to want to sell a lot of it, okay? And so I'm going to manufacture a lot because I can sell it for a high price. If I can only sell it for $5, I'm going to manufacture less, okay? And if I can sell it for $3, even less. So in this case, as we see as our price increases, okay, I'm willing to make more 
because I can use res- the similar resources, I can make more and I can make more profit. So the law of supply says as the price increases, the quantity demanded also increases. So opposite of, of the demand, law of demand, right? Law of demand was as the price increases, we the quantity demanded is less. Here, as the price increases, the quantity demanded is more. And it makes sense. Businesses are going to make more if they can sell it for more. Okay, now let's put these two together. And this is what we're really going to be working with, is the supply and demand curve. Okay, on this axis, on the... The y-axis, we have price. On the x-axis, we have quantity. Then we have supply here, upsloping, supply to the sky. And demand is down. Supply to the sky, demand down. But within supply and demand, we look for where they're the same. Because it doesn't do you any good as a business to be way up here supplying this many when people would only be demanding way over here, okay? So you've got a disequilibrium. So what's going to happen is, over time, everybody's going to figure out that these tasty hamburgers is, if they sell them for $5, businesses will supply the same amount as consumers demand, everyone will be happy, the item will be at equilibrium, Okay, over here we can see we have the quantity. Here the price, we always do it that way. Quantity on the x-axis, price on the y-axis, and we reach equilibrium this way. Most important concept in economics. Supply and demand have to be at equilibrium. And later on we'll talk about if they're not at equilibrium, some of the consequences of that and how we talk about that. Okay. That's it for supply and demand curves. The next things we're going to talk about are determinants of supply and the determinants of demand and what happens to these curves. See you next time.